in June. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, please now recording. <laughs> Okay, the meeting will come to order. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Or a roll call, not a vote. She was there, she's no longer there. Okay. Vice President Diane Law. Here. Council Member Shirley Blair Fuller. Here. Council Member Brooke Bouquet Williams. Here. Council Member Deb Cassini Klein. Here. Council Member Andrea Gatillo. Here. Council Member Jay Bourne. Here. Mayor Paul Gamma. Here. Okay. Um, do we have anyone who is wanting to speak to us this evening? If there's anyone online that would like to speak, please raise your hand. No. Nope. All, right. All right. Okay. So we will start with discussion items. This has to do with uh, the minutes. Uh, the minutes for both all the meetings in January are in your binder. Uh, we will of course act on those next week. Any comments or questions about those? No. No. Okay. All right. Now uh, we wanted to talk, didn't we, yes. next about? Um, we do have a guest here. Yes. We have Andrew from Mount Lebanon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can sit up there and back here, whatever you guys like to do. I'll join you. Come on. Here. Come, on in. Come on in. Yeah, so Andrew is the finance director with Mount Lebanon. Um, I met up with him through correspondence with Krista in regards to possible finance cooperative that we could join in uh, after some discussion. Um, that was a really good opportunity yeah. for us and help the borough because they already have an understanding of local government invoices and they have the capacity to bring us on as well. Um, and we'll go into more detail as well with that. But through these discussions, we brought on some attention from the DCEB, which is the state, mm -hmm. which is a very exciting uh, opportunity as well because it's always nice to state that as well now so we bring in potentially more yes thank you um again my name is Andrew McCreary I've been uh Mount Lebanon's finance director for a little over 10 years uh, I've been in local government for more than 18 at this point mm -hmm. um, just in finance um I you know Sheldon uh from the Big Bang Theory calls it fun with flags. I like to call it fun with finance, but you know, he kind of stole my line. But um, I'm passionate about finance and this is what I do, um, and especially in the local government sector. So uh, last uh, two, two years ago, um, we had approached Dormont during a crisis that they had had uh, in their finance department. I made an offhand comment um, that there's no reason why they need to hire another person. We could totally do this. Uh, here we are, um, you know, 18 months later and we're doing it and we've done it for a little over a year now and it's been quite successful. So what is it? It is us helping uh, other boroughs um, to be successful together. Um, that's, I think we can lift each other up uh, in doing this process. It doesn't matter about a river, it doesn't matter if you're uh, contiguous to our border or not. Um, this can all be done together. And as we, you need someone. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, it can be done together. So um, I'm here to answer any questions you have tonight. I, I'll give you a little brief spiel about the way it kind of works uh, and how it's been successful for Dormont uh, and how I envision Churchill being uh, successful as well. Uh, and then field any questions you may have and I'm here to answer them this evening. Uh, I've met with some council members already, so um, mm -hmm. they may have given you a little preview. So. Uh, you know, feel free to please ask any questions you may have. Um, there's a couple highlights I want to make sure that this agreement 
uh, that everyone's aware of in this agreement that's before you. It's been, uh, I believe, being reviewed by your solicitor. Uh, it's been seen by your manager and so forth. But there are a couple of highlights I want to make sure that everybody's aware, even the, the Churchill residents. One, we cannot touch your money. In no way, shape, or form will Mount Lebanon have access to your funds, to move your funds, to touch your funds. Everything will be in accordance with Churchill's borough's policies on how money is moved. Um, that will all be done by your internal departments, uh, whether it be Michelle or uh, Ashley, most likely will be the ones transferring within your funds and any release of funds. So through uh, a, a check writing or ACH or you know credit card, those types of things will all be done in accordance with your policies. Uh, to give you an example, uh, at Dormont, we do a, a third party check writing process um, to where a company, we release funds to a company and they write checks on behalf of Dormont. Uh, that's going to be our recommendation to you as well. Uh, but there's three approvers that it has to go through. It has to go through the borough manager and it has to go through two separate council members before the money is released. Um, and it can go up to three. That kind of grinds the wheels a little bit, but it can be done. Um, let alone getting to that point, it's already been through uh, review by department heads, manager, up through us. We, as a third party, we're just uploading files and doing those types of things. So just so you're aware, we're not touching your money in any way, shape or form. And I just wanna make sure that's clear. Second thing is this agreement, I, while I feel it's going to be successful, uh, the people you have involved, Michelle, I've been with uh, here for a couple months now um, and getting to know, I think we're gonna be successful. I have all the confidence in myself, uh, my team and uh, the people I've met here. But this agreement, the way we're gonna set this up is that if at some point, whether the people involved at this table or not, you want to separate, it will all be yours. There will be nothing that Mount Lebanon owns. Um, the software will be yours, the invoices will be yours, all the processes, all the things that we spin up will all be yours. It will not be ours in any way, shape or form. The idea is not to hold anybody hostage that if you wanna go, you go, that's okay. <laughs> not gonna offend me. And quite frankly, I hope that if that day does one, the one day does come, that you're in a better place for it, right? You want to do it on your own. You think you're better off doing it that way. Great. Hey, and no, 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 no hard feelings. Uh, but we feel that together we're going to be better uh, together uh, there. Um, so there's processes of where we start. So where we're going to start is in your accounts payable uh, processes. That's where we'll start. Um, you, you also have a new software coming on board, which will help uh, do as well. Um, the softwares that we're going to have involved will all be ones that I'm recommending. Um, one of the things we learned from the Dormont Cooperative is that doing separate software doesn't work. <laughs> it's become a lot, and uh, there's nothing saying that Dormont software doesn't work. It's just I have to know multiple softwares more than I do now. Um, and that's not fair to anybody, and I don't think that's fair to Churchill and uh, anybody else that comes into the cooperative. Um, so uh, we're going to start there and then we'll start uh, expanding as we go. We'll start doing a lot of cash receipting for you uh, as needed. Bank reconciliations, financial reports and all those things you would you would expect uh, that should be coming uh, coming your way. Uh, another exciting part of this is that you're coming on with another borough um, in Aetna. Mm -hmm. So Aetna and Churchill will be coming on together. Um, uh, Aetna's approved the agreement. They're ready to roll. Uh, they'll be coming behind you because they have a little bit more work to do um, to get to the point of handing it off to us. I think you guys are in a better position than they, they are currently. They'll eventually get there. They'll get there in 2024, no doubt, uh, and we'll make it happen. Um, so I'm confident that we can do that. Uh, and finally uh, is the, the DCED involvement. So Michelle touched on that. Um, you guys did apply for and are in the queue for some funding for a stamp grant, an STMP grant. Uh, you guys should be getting notification here any day. Um, so don't hold me to it, but it's looking good. Um, so uh, that will be covering up to 50% of the costs for the first two years of the program. Um, so that should be adequate to get this off the ground um, and, and, and work dovetail into to what we're trying to do. So uh, overall, I think the first year of what we've learned with Dormont will benefit Churchill. <laughs> Uh, we made some mistakes in the, the beginning of, of processes and those types of things, uh, but you'll see our face a little bit here. If the agreement moves forward, you'll see 
uh, myself and, and the person I will hire to, to help us uh, do this for the first couple months. And then we really haven't been back to Dormont since, um, in all honesty. Um, we don't need to be there often. Um, and it's kind of rolling on its own now um, to where there's not much involvement from my level anymore of the implementation and those types of things. Once it gets up and rolling, um, uh, that, that communication between Ashley uh, it would most likely be actually be the majority of the, the communication, but as it rolls up to Michelle as well, uh, will be uh, kind of just run, running itself by, I would say, month nine, if mine would be my uh, opinion. So that's kind of a nutshell of where we're at. Um, so I'm here to take any questions you may have, and I'm excited if we're able to move this forward. I have a question. Fire so me. you said uh, the stamp grant could cover up to 50%. That's correct. What is the cost of this? So, yeah, I was just going to say with it, we would have to purchase, it's called Active Fund, mm -hmm. um, Stamp Free, mm -hmm. and then there's another program as well. I believe. Those are the two softwares you'll have to purchase. Okay. Yeah. And isn't there an online something? That's, that's not going to cost you anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, I believe total it might be mm -hmm. around there roughly uh, which is pretty comparable to what we we're already spending for bookminders mm -hmm. our initial increase in price would be the purchase of acu fund but with the purchase of acu fund is what we would need to keep it as well like it would be our program okay. which is nice mm -hmm. i assume it's more efficient and more heard, accurate. Yeah. Um, She's going off of my 18 years. Okay. Of well, so. Saying that I, to you. <laughs> I read a lot of reviews of it, and mm -hmm. I hear that it's uh, more proficient mm -hmm. and accurate and geared towards, uh, you can gear it towards more local government needs. Mm -hmm. Right now, we use QuickBooks with Bookminders. Mm -hmm which is associated more with like your general, uh, if you have like a nonprofit, a small nonprofit, it's very nonprofit or small business friendly. Mm -hmm. um, it can be manipulated for smaller entities. Um, so AccuFund, and I, with the demo, I was involved in it well, it seems like it can be manipulated for our line items that we have as well, right. which would be very nice. Mm -hmm. There's nothing uh, in just a dovetail on that. So AccuFund, I, I've said it for years and I say it at, at conferences and when people, there's not, there's no government that's smaller than us that shouldn't be using AccuFund. It's inexpensive and I've used it for this number of years and it can, it can handle everything. Um, and there's nothing that your size government or even art, I mean, I haven't switched off of it and I get a call every, probably every week from a software vendor saying, hey, do you want to have a conversation? I go, no, I don't want a conversation. Um, so I, I, it will, it, and in the end, you'll have the ability to get one touch button within the office to run whatever report you may need, right? So Michelle actually will be able to run whatever they need at a moment's notice uh, and will be able to facilitate um, uh, all things accounting wise mm -hmm. um, if needed. Right. Yeah. It's great for you, right? Yeah, it will be nice. really nice. And with the grant, it's split up for the first two years. So mm -hmm. that will be for the AccuFund software, for the stamp link, for the, um, you know, the pay for Mount Lebanon because they do have to bring an additional person on and there will be an hourly rate associated with that because they will be doing our invoices and processing paperwork and all of that. So that grant will help cover those fees associated with that as well. So the fees that we will be paying to Mount Lebanon, if I remember correctly, were around $1,500 a month. That's correct. And that will include the part-time or the person that you're going to be hiring to do our reconciliation and also um, some of the accounting on our behalf. Is that correct? No. So it'll be $1,500 plus the hours worked on your behalf. Okay. And what... As far as... Um, I know that you were saying during our initial conversation that 
you did not really want to move forward with us until you were sure that you were going to be able to hire someone. Is that uh, uh, the ads are ads going out tomorrow? So okay. yeah, wait, that, that won't be a problem. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that person, just so you, you're aware, so the reason the person's not on board yet uh, is because it's not fair to anybody and a new hire to, to throw them into this, right? So you, this is where the fifteen hundred dollar comes into play, is that it's going to be my time, right? I'm not booking you an hourly rate. It's the overhead for all of my staff and things I can throw out to staff that I have to help us get you lifted off the ground, right? That is transition of the QuickBooks information over all your vendor uh implementation all that stuff i have staff that can do that mm -hmm. once the new person comes on which will be early march um that's when they'll start focusing just on you and you only use those hours i'll give you an idea that the first uh, month of dormont being on it was maybe a grand total for the month of 10 hours because there needs to be a lift to get you guys up to where they can now start processing for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and all those things will happen in, in the same for Aetna as well, uh, that you'll be sharing that. Things I had reiterated to you specifically, I know that the $1,500 was a, a sticker shock to you, um, is there's nothing saying that that needs to be in perpetuity. So Malam's not looking to make money on this. This is not a money maker for us. That's not what we're looking to do. Um, so in the future, especially if we now have three and we're two years down the line uh, from the this agreement date and we're three boroughs in and, you know, I'm not looking to make $4,500 a month off the cooperative. That's not what we're looking. We're looking to do a cost sharing and most likely that's coming down uh, as long as I'm in charge. I'm going to be looking at bringing that down for everybody, not just not just Churchill, but for Aetna and Dormont as well. And I think we would get to that point where you realize like what our realistic hours are and mm -hmm. how much time and energy you're putting into it plus us. So we come to the common ground with that. And that's why I mentioned like, so when we first started, it was a lot of my hours when we first lift you off the ground. There's a lot of hours that I'm going to be putting into this. Um, but now on a daily and weekly basis, I'm not spending much time doing anything because it's rolled, right? It's starting mm -hmm. to roll, roll down. So those are the types of administrative um, things that are in that administrative side. It's only, the only thing you're going to get billed an hourly rate for is that part-timer that we would hire them they have to go off of it. Yeah, that's a good point because if we did use um, an external entity to do the onboarding from QuickBooks to AccuFund, they do charge very high price. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's, this isn't my first rodeo putting uh putting things into action fund. So we should be <laughs> we should be good getting that in getting you guys over. So um, so it should be exciting. Yeah. Do we have any contractual obligations with book matters or how does that work? Yeah, I've been in communication with them as well. Um, I've given them an ideal timeline of hopefully the spring or summer of a possibility. And, and I was very really communicated with them. Sorry. Anybody have any questions? Any other questions? Uh, um, Michelle, Michelle, Jay didn't hear the last thing you said. Say it a little oh, louder. I've been in communication with Bookminders, who currently does all our invoice processing. Um, and I told them the possibility of leaving them spring, early summer. Um, we don't have like a yearly contract or anything. It's kind of month by month, but because the individual we have right now with them is amazing, um, we kind of just wanted to do the heads up. Yeah. As like a respect. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. No. So I'll, I'll, I'll ask, I'll ask the, mm -hmm. the, the council member of 10 years question okay what do you think would happen if your whole council turned over does right. that have any impact on us no no okay. i don't think so good no um we're pretty insulated in the finance department and De right. denny can attest he's been to to many of meetings okay. um 
the, really the finance department starts to peek their head out in about October and they start paying it back <laughs> to us and the budget starts coming around. Okay. Um, outside of that, uh, I literally, my office is in old jail cell. Um, <laughs> it's a converted jail cell from the 1920s. So uh, I say, I just go back to my jail cell and just <laughs> stick down there. No. Uh, it, it, our council is fully supportive of this. All right. um, they uh, actually put some feelers out to other communities um, so they're fully supportive and, and promoting this. Yeah. Now I, I say put it put it in the way back. Just put that away for a second. Let's let's get these up off the ground first. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But my ultimate goal is that with the DCD involvement, uh, so you're aware, is to have them write a white paper on how this works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it may not be Mount, Mount Lebanon, a bigger community that has some capacity that then can help a smaller community. Uh, and really just ingrained in what we do and we, all the processes we have, it may make sense at a state level. It may make sense as a county level. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the best answer is, but I just know that we can do this. Um, and I think ultimately we're better together. Um, you know, doing, you know, I think we have some pretty good processes and we'll learn some stuff together because um, there's stuff that you know, if you're not learning every day. I don't know what you're doing here. So. Um, well, I know it's a hot topic to connect, so I expect yes. the other people interested in doing. Well, well, it's not just me. There's a lot. I have a big team behind me, and yes, a, a good team behind me that, yeah. that understands it, and um, you know, it, it it'll be good. Right. So. Okay, right. and, and not to step on the finance chair's toes. Um, however, I wanted to mention that it is included in the budget for 2024. So, if you all want to revisit your budgets. Um, and look at the line items. It's like line item under each department, and you can see the expenses um, associated. Thank you. Good work. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Anybody else? Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Then we'll just go back to our regular agenda. We have uh, our staff. And a, a, a consulting reports again, they would be in your binder. It's really important that you mm -hmm. that you look at those. I would say, in particular, the engineering. You know, Denny gives us a very detailed report every month, and that's the nuts and bolts of the borough. So that's important. Um, any questions about any of that? Yeah, I have a quick question. Yeah, I think that's in that binder. It was a Robert Hickok. Yes, we're going to be acting on that uh, next, actually. Okay. So, <laughs> yes, uh, we have an opening on the Planning Commission. And as it turns out, the Planning Commission meeting is Wednesday night. And this is an individual. I, I hope that all of you had a chance to look at his resume. Yeah. Very impressive. Very. I'm, I'm really thrilled that he's interested in serving. And so we can act this evening uh, to appoint him, but that motion should not be mine. It should be someone else's. I would like to make a motion approving the resolution appointing Robert Hickox um, the third to the planning commission. Okay. Second, second. That was my guess at that one. <laughs> Questions? Questions? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Unanimous. Good. Thank you. And he'll be able to attend his first planning commission meeting on Wednesday. <laughs> we do things really in a timely way, don't we? Yeah. Okay. Um, the finance committee. We have a cooperative financial operations agreement between Churchill Borough and Mount Lebanon, which we just did. Uh, and to discuss the ordinance that would remove fees from the code of the borough of Churchill and would address such fees in the borough's the resolution. I'm looking at the old agenda. Was there a new agenda? When was the new agenda? I teamed the old one and then I said something. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Well, okay. Sorry, so we're just gonna pass over that. Yeah. All right. 
Can I know that? Yeah, okay. can I add on the cooperative uh, financial operations agreement? So if council is ready to move forward with that and vote on it next week, we do need to approve one by resolution because it's an intergovernmental cooperation. Okay. Well, so is that, is that, is yeah. that prepared? Yeah. 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 I mean, I, we didn't hear any opposition in this discussion. No. I think, no. Okay. So uh, anything else in finance? No. We're an exciting chair, uh, but we have a great team. And yeah. Obviously, I'd love working with these lovely ladies. So we'll make sure that we keep everything together on the on the financial side. And, right. And if you ever have any questions or anything comes up, please let me know. Or that, that work? no, we're we're here to help you. You know, like there's nothing worse than looking at these spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We're, yep. We have a monthly meeting set up. So, um, in person meeting, Michelle and I. Yeah. And then good. afterwards, we'll find a great time for us to all meet, and then we'll go over what we what we discuss. One of the things that uh, Val and I talked about was learning from this last year's process. So, um, you know, I'd encourage the finance committee to talk about how you can make it easier for yourselves and for the staff and various departments to arrive at budget figures ASAP and you know, I would just say, get people to get things in preliminarily yes, and you please. get a picture of what is going on and yes. then we can fine tune. Yes. That sounds Absolutely. good. Absolutely. The, the earlier, the better. That way we yeah. can really look at it and see how it impacts, yeah. you know, the entire year yeah. fiscally or month or whatever it might be. But um, the earlier, the better, even knowing about earlier than yeah. later, you know, just so you have an idea of where it's going to go. And, and I think one of the things that happened was that that it wasn't clear about who should be talking to whom when. Mm -hmm. And that's that's real important. Absolutely. That just keeps everything going much more smoothly. OK. Yeah, absolutely. Great. All right. Well, that sounds great. I'm 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 thrilled that you're doing this. Thank you. Oh, I have, I have great themes. So that's the idea is to work together and yeah, and make it as painless as possible. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, there are a number of things going on in public safety. There's a report in your in your binder mm -hmm. uh, from that discussion. And we have a memorandum of understanding between Churchill and its attorney when it comes to police audio and video. So, um, Ron, do you want to talk about that? Sure, uh, I can touch on it and Devin might be able to enlighten me a little bit, but it's it's pursuant to Act 22, which is um, a law that uh, affords the public up to 60 days to require uh, or to to request um, audio and video recordings that we make while we're on patrol, be it a dash cam or a body cam. So the, 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 the law stipulates they have 60 days to do that. The memorandum of understanding with the DA's office is that if we get any of those requests, which it's funny as it is the day I sent Gavin an email about it, we got a, a request, mm -hmm. um, but it was outside of the parameters, so we denied it. But uh, the DA's office, we will forward that to the DA's office. They will review the video, we'll do any redacting, anything they need to do to make it compliant so it doesn't divulge any information about an investigation or a crime right. we're you know, working on. And then, um, so they, they we basically hand it off to them. And I don't, does it come back to us at some point or it stays? It stays with okay. them. Yeah, they, we, we talk about the response. Uh, okay. other than that. Yeah, it's, it, it's really, it's a it's a really helpful service that the DA's office provides. Takes it off with record my plate and the yeah. plate. Yeah. And they have really uh, someone who specializes in reviewing the videos and doing that the people the redacting or you know, removing a, a portions of the video. So uh, there's no cost. Uh, so it's really kind of a no-brainer. Okay. Um, most of our other clients have already entered into this on my year. It's just, you know, I mean, it doesn't happen all that often. You got to put it to Yeah, it's rare. And one thing I did want to mention is we had, um, we talked about uh, expanding, or typically our, our axon cameras from the cars and the body cams retain for 30 days. The law says 60 days, so we did amend that um, to a 60-day hold on all video before they automatically purge. Um, <clears throat> those are videos that we don't, <laughs> Uh, there's certain categories that we can categorize a video after we review it where we'll automatically retain it indefinitely. There's ones we can manually retain. Um, other than that, the typical everyday calls for service, parking dogs, traffic stops, things where, where there's nothing, um, you know, any, where there's no nothing notable happens, yeah. they automatically purge every 30 days because uh, all of our videos are stored in the cloud. So um, we're going to see how it plays out cost-wise, going from 30 days to 60 days to retain the video. I, I would hope that the video is that cost would be nominal uh -huh. to retain it for 60 days. 
Um, but either way, it's kind of a, it, it's something we're going to have to um, undertake because of the, the law that requires their state yeah. assistance. Okay. So we'll have a motion uh, for next week on your agenda. Yeah. Right. Okay. Anybody have any questions about that? Any requests for audio and video? Will the mayor be notified or will council be notified of that request? There's a, um, they have to make, there's some stipulations on how they request it. It has to be done in writing. They have to specify the date, the time, the reason. So there's criteria that they have to follow. That's typically forwarded to either the borough office or myself. And then I, I'll let the mayor know as a courtesy. So I usually let the mayor and council and everybody know. But my requests uh, for any right to know or anything always go straight to Gavin. In this case here, uh, it, will I be sending them to you and then down, or I can just send them straight to the DA? Yeah, so I'll be sending them straight to the contact of the DA's office. And, but I always let uh, you know the uh, management government, pub, our public safety, or and certainly the mayor know. Okay. okay, and we discussed the right along policy before, so we can move on from there. Um, infrastructure, I shared that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> um. Active transportation. Uh, I have not been directly involved in that, so I um, think Michelle's going to let us know what's going on there. Yeah, so we uh, received two grants, one from the county and one from the state, uh, to do an active, tra active transportation plan. Uh, so we uh, council approved Patrick to go ahead and be our engineer for that. Uh, we created a steering committee. The mayor is on that, um, as well as a lot of residents, some bikers in the communities, walkers, <laughs> Bob Klein's on it. Yeah. <laughs> He's a walker. <laughs> um, and just several other individuals as well. Um, and in this, we're just looking to see how we can go ahead and make Churchill Borough a more accessible community overall. Um, in part of this active transportation plan, we have to make certain requirements. One of those is having a public hearing. Uh, and we are hoping to have council's approval to go ahead and advertise for the public hearing. I believe we're trying to aim for February 21st. Um, so just for approval, we can go ahead and get that. Um, Okay, I saw some interesting maps here tonight. Okay, then let's just jump by and look at them. Maps out there, um, just seeing where like a lot of the hills are in the borough. Where is the right? <laughs> where there is like a lot of nice biking areas, yeah. different stuff like that. So, sidewalks, yeah. There will be a survey coming out too to keep in mind. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let them bank it today. Oh, like, yeah, there'll be a survey right. coming out too that will send to council, and then we encourage like council to send to everyone we can, just so mm -hmm. you know, asking how you see Churchill being a um, more accessible community with biking and walking and safe for drivers and walkers and bikers and all of that. So that will become a very thing. Yeah, that is the same date as a rec board meeting. I don't know if that matters to I'll you. I'll confirm the date, but I do think okay. it's the, the same date. Okay. Yeah. Hard to get the yeah. Yeah. So quick yeah. question on, on this in particular. Um, one, in the steering committee and the makeup and the review, and a few times that I've kind of dealt in these spaces, which is every day, um, does the steering committee have, and I, I don't know it, um, an active eye on the impact for people with mo mobility disabilities. Yeah. What does that look like for this? And then, because I'm hearing biking and walking in path, right. but I'm not hearing mm -hmm. ensuring folks who are in wheelchairs have access. And so I want to make sure because the county then has a secondary follow up obligation, which they're about to get a lot of pressure, I know, coming, yeah. um, in which they need to ensure that they're meeting their obligation. Which means reviewing all of the sub recipients of the county, which are every single municipality, pretty much now, including Churchill. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you could just talk a little bit about that, so I so I understand okay. it. Be yeah, great. there are requirements and guidelines that we are required to follow with the student committee, and part of that is having um, individuals or families with individuals with uh, it could be a variety of disabilities. Yeah. So, so lived experience on, on the steering committees. Yeah. 
And who runs the meet? Is it you or is it Pashek? Who uh, who's in charge? Uh, Combination? Uh, it's, it's basically Pashek. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well. Can I kick us back one agenda item? I know yeah. we did we did cover some of the legal issues regarding the ride along policy, but what what is council's will? Should, should that be an agenda item for approval next next week? Is there council want to discuss whether they are in favor or not in favor? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Personally, I have participated in a ride along um, with the Pittsburgh Bureau of Police. It was a great experience. Um, I was not an elected official at the time. I was just a resident. I'm not sure what their policy was. Um, however, it was an eye opener to see the day to day interactions that police have with the community, mm -hmm. um, being that this is going to be limited to the mayor and also elected officials, mm -hmm. as long as there's no insurance issues. I, you know, see the benefit of it. I think it's a great idea, Ron. I really do. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree for every single said I'm going to ride along with Pittsburgh with the yeah. university. And I think it's a, always a great experience. So mm -hmm. if you haven't done mm -hmm. one, you um, Not until after I hear what the insurance, what yeah. the, any liabilities are going to be. We'll explore that between now and next year. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, yeah. But if that's taken care of, you're good? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, good. Thank, thank you know Ron and Gavin both for this. An initial discussion was like, yeah, you can do it all for right. Yeah. Then Ron went a little further. Sure. And said, well, we got to look at this, and that's yeah, so. I'm glad to see. You know, we are where we are now. Yeah. With having a set yeah. policy yeah. and yeah. guidance. Like, well, I think it's important for us because we're making decisions. Mm -hmm. and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. You know, exactly. it's even like when I first became on council two years ago, and I did the drive through with Ralph for right. about three hours. And mm -hmm. at first I said, well, I've lived in Churchill for 20 years. And he's oh, like, no, you don't yeah, understand. Yeah. And it was such an eye opener sure. in our little town. Yep. So many things I didn't know about 31 dead ends and this and that. Wow. So I think yeah. that that would be really helpful for all of us. Yeah. Thank you, Ron. Uh, sure. It was great. Good. Thank you. <laughs> well, we're on infrastructure. So I want to ask now for Ralph to present a very special person who's in the room. Yes, I'd like to uh, have Scott Sobaker stand up. Thanks. 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 He's doing really well. He's picking up on things really well. Um, we've had him out in the field a little bit, explaining to him what we're looking for. Um, the various trash cans and car junk cars and junky houses and things like that. Um, so I think with a couple more days of a little bit of training, he should be pretty much heading in the right direction. He's picking up all the paperwork really quick and the computer stuff really quick. So uh, I think we're moving along really well. Uh, we're going to get ready, uh, looking for classes from the tape for his off-duty inspection license. And once he does that, um, we'll move into that position to do that. And then that, that'll be that. And then we've got myself taking care of that. Okay. Well, can I mention our meeting tomorrow also with the folks from Gateway? Oh, yeah. Talking, Sorry, talking okay. about the new software that, uh, that, that they will help us implement to track. Yeah. We do have some of that software okay. now, um, but there's some tweaks to it we want to make for Churchill for our for our benefit. Um, we do we've had some uh, gateways done a tremendous job of putting together a software program for oxy permits, building permits, Great. lateral yeah. inspections, die testing, um, code enforcement. But there are some tweaks that we have to make to it uh, since we have our own guy now. So there's some things we have to do that change that around a little bit, make it a little bit easier for all of us and better. Um, Gavin can be in, that, on, in on that, and the guys from Gateway will be there. Myself and Scott will be there, and of course Michelle. So it'll be a good meeting, and uh, we'll move, move forward. Everything looks well, and welcome aboard. Great. Oh, thank today. you. Welcome, Scott. Thank you for interviewing, and thank you for, for serving. Can I just ask a question? Um, code enforcing is a big part of his job. Yeah. But also, he will be working with the fire department. Absolutely. Okay, also, I just want to explain it to some residents yeah. who may not understand because it is a complicated job. Yes, it's, yes. It's, so it's like me, basically. Right. 
Okay, so if, if, when he's here during the day, he, he is allowed to respond to fire calls and assist myself uh, and another guy with uh, answering fire calls during the day. So I was just recently promoted to lieutenant in the fire department. So, um, so he's now my lieutenant. Uh, he's got 10 years of service in the fire service. He's a uh, certified firefighter one. He's also a um, trained driver operator of all the apparatus. So that's that's the big thing, you know, with the firefighting is you got to be trained on the fire end. You got to be trained yeah. to drive. You know, you can be a fireman, but if you can only stand over here and check a little truck out, you're not right. doing anybody any good. Right, right. So, and our residents to know that he yeah. he wears many hats. Yeah. And which is really uh -huh. beneficial to us. Yeah. yeah. We're really happy to have you here. So Scott's very well trained in the fire service as well. So you know, it's a good it's a good uh, choice to have him here. So and he's already familiar with Churchill. He's lived in Churchill. And he just recently got married and moved out of Churchill. Um, so, but he, he's been in Churchill all his life except right. for the last couple of years. And he's been in that fire department, like I said, for 10 years. So he's more right. familiar with the area and well, how, we, how we operated the fire department. Which obviously is a bonus. Well, absolutely. Yeah, you know, the area well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I hope we go, we'll put together a really nice article for the next news. For the next news and then deadline must we'll scratch all of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting to okay. Uh, Denny, the um, the alternative M forty seven sanitary sewer overflow. You want to talk a yeah, about that? Yeah, um, I, I brought this up briefly at uh, last month's meeting. Um, the presentations were included in your binder last month. We were looking for um, this is a multi municipal effort through Three Rivers Wet Weather, mm -hmm. who's been assisting with this. Just to take it back. I'll try to keep it brief, but uh, this is all stemming from the consent order, the consent order obligations, and everybody that is uh, within the consent order is required to submit a sanitary sewer overflow elimination plan um, and alternative analysis, and that's if you are tributary to a sanitary sewer overflow. There's a sanitary sewer overflow downstream from Churchill in uh, uh, Wilkinsburg, the municipal, and that's in the M47 point of connection, uh, involves Churchill, Wilkinsburg, Edgewood, Swissvale, and Braddock Hills are all involved with that. Um, the, the other uh, requirement of the consent order is if you're over the gold line standard threshold in terms of how much I and I you have in your system, you have to reduce it to that. Luckily, Churchill is actually below that standard in all of our point of connections. So our only requirement is, is that we meet this requirement for the um, overflow elimination plan. The shed that is tributary to that is actually uh, the Black Ridge area of town, uh, the Northwest piece, which right. used to go to the pump station. Uh, right after this order was signed was when that pump station was decommissioned and, uh, and flows were uh, redirected. So that is actually the borough's project towards the this order right. so we, we we have already met our obligations but we do have to be part of this um overflow elimination plan right. um through that multi-municipal group headed up by three rivers wet weather evaluated a number of sanitary sewer alternatives um like i said I, I they're supposed to provide a memo i'll make sure that i forward that along mm -hmm. so that everyone knows kind of what it is that uh that is being reviewed at this time um but through that alternatives process, they evaluated five different alternatives in order to eliminate those overflows that exist within the system. Um, those costs ranged anywhere from 20 to $30 million in total cost. Um, now that was based on significant storage tank improvements um, uh, can, uh, in, in large conveyance, as well as removal of I, &I from the system. The engineers that were part of the committee ended up looking at um, option A, which was an option that evaluated uh, the minimum 10% reduction, which is required by, by your consent order at this point. And again, Churchill has already met that obligation with, with the project that was completed. Um, and then that would involve uh, uh, potentially tanks or some type of storage downstream to alleviate these overflows. So. One other piece, those those costs um, do sound extreme, but this this is just one sanitary sewer overflow. Luckily, that's all that Churchill's uh, uh, tributary to. There are a number that are tributary to seven or more yeah. uh, overflows in uh, situations like this. So 
with that, uh, this line is also on a trunk line. Uh, this trunk line is expected to be regionalized and divided to Alpha Sand. So that is the other aspect of this process. That project and all municipalities will have to complete at least a 10% reduction per this order um, because the timeline for this elimination would be outside of this order. And therefore, it would be Alcasan following that regionalization that would uh, perform the actual overflow elimination. And then that cost would be distributed amongst all of the Alcasan service territory as opposed to just these uh, five municipalities. Okay. So that um, that is the idea. I wanted to give kind of the general general background. They were just asking for a, a, a consensus from the municipalities. Mm -hmm. uh, Churchill obviously has a very small piece of this at this point. Following the um, uh, the reroute of the system, we only have thirty nine homes which flow in this direction. Right. We are still obligated to be mm -hmm. part of uh, part of this overflow elimination plan, and our name would be on the elimination plan that would be submitted. Um, by by June of this year. Okay. So, is there any additional cost to us? No, no yeah. additional cost at this point. Again, it, it is just kind of being part of that many yeah. three rivers. What weather is heading up that yeah. three rivers? Okay. What weather is taking care of the report? We've uh, reviewed the findings and the alternatives. Uh, again, see no no detriment to the municipality. It is mm -hmm. uh, downstream, and we did want to make sure that they were understanding that Churchill would know, ha not have any further impact or projects at the right. moment since Churchill's project was already right. completed. Right. Well, and I just want to mention, you know, the consent decree, everything is going up every year. The fact that we've managed to keep up with this uh, is very important. If you don't, then you get hit hard uh, down the road. And that's not what we want to do to our successor. So or to our people. So thanks, Denny. Any questions about Denny's report? No? Okay. Communication committee. Well, as I mentioned, our newsletter, hard deadline, um, March 1st. I know sometimes we have a lot of wiggle room. I was talking to Michelle about this. And the reason I say that is um, I'm also putting my record hat on. We're, we're trying to work out the Churchill dinner yeah. and it probably will be the end of April or beginning of May. And so it's a limited time that we have to promote it. And I know Ashley, you, you both do a great job on savvy and whatever, but the big thing is when yeah. we have that full page on the newsletter and we're still, we're down to two restaurants trying to figure it all out, but that doesn't give us a lot of time to promote right. it because you also need to back up two weeks because the restaurant needs a final number. So now you're really only talking about two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I know there've been times where, you know, we've got a couple, we got another week. Or I'm really asking that whatever articles anybody wants to write, get it in by March 1st. We have an extra day in February. So <laughs> you got that whole extra day. And um, like, I know we have a new company, which will make it more efficient and they're faster. So that's a good thing. But that that's kind of the main main thing right now with um, the communication committee. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's about it. All right. Oh, and and the winter newsletter will be mailed or well, I got. Well, that means I mean it was. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was mailed out. So yeah, um, and very nice job, you guys. Really nice. Yeah, we're using a new company. New company. They're located in Verona. Um, they're saving a decent amount of money. Um, this newsletter had 20 pages, yeah. which is more than we've had in a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it was a, a good material, mm -hmm. but nothing should really be cut. Mm -hmm. They're also going to be using uh, a system that Herman's didn't offer, known as um, about the address it's system. It's the home delivery system where mm -hmm. they basically deliver. Thousand per cell instead of us using the postage and the mailing system, yeah, they'll actually deliver to each house. Wonderful, and it's so, going to be less expensive than they're doing. Well, they're not delivering it personally, okay. Here's, it's a system that they use. Um, right now, what happens, Ashley has to go in and do the addresses, okay. so it can cause error. Um, and then people will be like, oh, I want to be on the newsletter or all that. So Ashley's personally entering it in on Excel sheet. Which is a lot of work. Oh, it's a lot of work. Right? <laughs> so um, 
right now they do a system where they get the address from the post office. Okay. And then they're able to send it that way to every church or one of them. And this is a company sense. you work with you before, know, so sense. you know them. Yes. And you know their quality of work. Yeah. And that's yeah. good too. And it's more efficient and less expensive. So yes. win, win, win. And it's what he was saying it ensures that every house in Clearfield gets the newsletter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you, you were uh, you were doing the updates to make sure yeah, updating yeah. from the county every month, and I kind of go through the list and um, yeah. take out the mm -hmm. add some, and yeah. And we also have extra mm -hmm. because um, they usually print mm -hmm. what they say extra for spillage, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, in uh -huh. case some uh -huh. just didn't. Well, they had very little spillage, so they had all these extras. Mm, no so, you stops. know, Rotary Club Wednesday, That's let's nice. bring some in. Or, you know, obviously our residents have them, but yeah. if there's anybody else who, you know, in the periphery who might think, yeah. we, we think would be interested in what we're doing, you know, take some. They've, they've got what, it was almost 200, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just not charge. Yeah. yeah, no extra charge. So, hey, take also advantage today, of that. I don't know if the chief wants to talk about this, but... Uh, communication wise, we, we advertise the new officer. Yes. So oh, yeah. that is on all of our social media. We'll continue to push that. Um, it's also on our website as well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We also utilize the um, Pennsylvania Chiefs Police Association and they network throughout the country. They have right. 4,000 recipients who, who mm -hmm. get their, uh, their posting. So between right. social media, and that we've already had officers. We just kicked it off today with the recruitment hiring campaign. So um, we've already had some of our officers get specs and phone calls from officers from other areas. Right. So we're happy with questions. Hopefully, they're all clear. Wonderful. Yes. Okay. Anything else in the communications? You're up next. Oh, climate action. Yeah. Okay. Um, we do have a meeting at the end of the month with. Eric from Connect and Jess, our intern, who is going to, um, well, by the way, Shirley, Andrea, and I are on climate action. Okay. Um, she is going to present all her findings and move forward with the climate action plan that, right. or our, our five year climate action plan that we will have presented to us. It won't be complete, but she's going to tell us, she's now working on it, taking all the data that she had. Um, I know, Ashley, there were times when we couldn't get all the data she wanted because certain institutions weren't being as cooperative as we would have liked. So we we finally had to say, okay, this is what we have. We're going to base it on that. And uh, so we'll be meeting about that at the end of the month. Um, and uh, Ken Balke had a wonderful tree committee meeting not too long ago to just kind of update us and let us know about the issues at hand with a lot of problems with, you know, less and less trees. And, yeah. you know, we know it's incumbent upon him and us to just educate our residents about how they can possibly save the trees before they just cut them down. I mean, in, in some instances, we have to cut trees down. But, you know, if there are ways, you know, we can, in fact, I think, surely you were even talking about something where you said, well, I didn't even know this or something, you know, if, if 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 people know, well, you know, try this, this, and this before you cut your tree down, it may make a difference. Um, so, and, and he always gives us a great report in our yeah. newsletter, but it was, I thought it was a very well done meeting. And uh, that's yeah. about it. You know, and also with the communications, then we talk about um, having some type of, of um, information package for the realtors to have when they're right. showing homes, in Churchill, mm -hmm. along with the sheet that says South has five bedrooms or whatever. Also, these are some ordinances that yeah. are yes. Yeah. Three ordinances. That's maybe, I don't know if that Wait falls camp, under you. All that kind of stuff. So we did talk about right. getting something like that together. Right. I don't know who would put that together. Is that, yeah, well, is that, yeah, because I agree. Yeah, that would I be. Mentioned, I mentioned to right. I'll say that Alona, talk to Alona to some today, and I said, you could maybe use the videos that we produce, right? Also, show your clients. You know, the one where you know we're showing them around the borough. And, you know, That's another thing. We've got those three videos yeah. on the on the website. Yeah. They're really a good promotion tool. To them. Yeah. People look at them and go, "Oh, wow!" 
church was pretty cool, yeah. you know, and it's and it's lovely too. Um, he had a good actor in it too. Yeah. <laughs> he's, the, he's the best. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I want to circle back oh. to. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Um, this year is the 90th anniversary of Churchill. Mm -hmm. So throughout the year, whether it's the Churchill dinner, community day, um, the rec board's looking at maybe some other smaller events. We want to have it all under the umbrella of the 90th anniversary. Maybe make a banner, or do um, perhaps at the Churchill dinner, wherever it may be. Right. We have a nice and this is something we need to work on. Maybe a nice table displays of pictures throughout the years, something nostalgic, that type of thing. So just kind of put your thinking caps on and think of like maybe things we could do that we are constantly promoting. And it really should be on our website. You know, our dinner will probably be, you know, celebrate Churchill's 90th, Churchill dinner, like that kind of thing. So everything will be under the umbrella of that yeah. throughout the year. And we just have to constantly find ways to promote it. Yeah. And, and to add a little more to that, now Ashley sent me the email from a resident who was oh. grew up here in Churchill Borough. Right. I was in touch with her, talked to her, it turned out I know her. Um, of course you do. So anyway, <laughs> they have all this material from, I don't know, that people, I remember, remember Fierce uh, Tavern on the Pike, where the Churchill Masters are now, where Tyke was, was, was a little grocery store. That was her grandfather. And they have all kinds of pictures and stuff. I talked to Zandy, and Zandy's going to meet with um, her name is Loris to get some oral history about this. So I talked to Zandy. Zandy said she would, you know, talk to her. So we're hoping to get some stuff in. And, and then on the same line, I talked to Michelle the other day, and we're we're looking for a um, a display case so that we can maybe house some of the things that we do get uh, that would somewhere be in the borough building. Um, so, Could we put something in the newsletter, maybe with Zandy's? article and some well, pictures and if you have any old pictures you know maybe somebody's grandfather great grandfather lived here or maybe they just have some old pictures he said he has a baseball uniform from one or artifacts or, sponsored a, a theme oh, we'll that. that would be pictures nice different things that, could we put something like in the newsletter that would be good or and on the website mm -hmm. so, okay but just keep thinking 90th anniversary yeah. and Okay. I just want, I need to circle back on one issue on public safety. Uh, Ron, would you tell them about the grant that you applied for and got? It's going to help us attract this. this yeah, of course. So I applied with the PCCD uh, for a grant for recruitment and retention. And the grant offers either a $5,000 signing bonus for new hires or a $7,000 option if you, uh, the borough is going to put the candidate through the police cabinet. So Obviously, um, time's not on our side. We're a small department, so we can't uh, you know, forego people that, that don't already have the academy. So um, we got the, the grant awarded for, uh, it's through 2025 uh, for two candidates. If we often only hire one in that time, uh, the remaining funds will be returned to PCCD. But it's, um, we were able to offer with this, this um, recruitment campaign, a $5,000 signing bonus. I, I talked with Brett and Love, and in an effort to try to guarantee at least some uh, retention time, uh, the $2,500 will be paid upon hire. The other $2,500 will be paid at the end of their first year, the probationary period, but they have to sign a uh, legal agreement to commit three years in total to Churchill before oh. they have the option of leaving. Okay. So I don't think that's too much. My, my concern was, because um, if anybody, works with younger groups today you know yeah. their their work ethics a little bit different than well, most of us are used to. so <laughs> you want to attract them but you also don't want to scare them off and then feeling like exactly. trapped so three years <laughs> seems to be a good middle ground where we can guarantee three years of and i think if we can keep it for three years i think so. yeah. i don't know if you saw the copy of the flyer i did, yeah. I did put one on so oh great okay pass around yeah. people who say look there yeah that's all on so the borough's web page facebook page our facebook for the police department um western pa chiefs have it um it's it's all over the place at this point. so we're, we're getting some responses already so hopefully you know last time we only well i think that our last uh time we tested earlier in 2023 we only got three candidates yeah. and uh I have no doubt that we'll receive a lot more okay. this time around. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, we'll go from there. It's, we started today and it goes till March 15th for accepting applications. Yes. Okay. Thank you for taking that initiative. Yeah, it's sure. going to make a difference. Okay. Uh, I'll just mention quickly the Ad Hoc Deer Committee. The Ad Hoc Deer Committee is going to be organizing a group of citizens to go Kill forward. <laughs> to go forward. And uh, any of you who have constituents who have you come with you and expressed concern about the deer, yeah. please send them my way. Okay. Sorry. Because uh, where we are at this point is that uh, people who've been studying this issue in the borough have come to the same conclusion I have, that we really are down to one issue, and that is damage to yards. I'm sorry, what did you say? I said we're really down to one issue. That is damage to the yard. Uh, our our automobile deer collision rate has been going down steadily, not up. Is that right? And uh why, why, why do you why do you think the that chief is? the chief and Ralph said that? I can't, I honestly can't recall the last time it, it was really? six, seven years ago. It was it was a couple times a week. I honestly can't recall the last time it was. <laughs> Oh, really? Every weekend now. All right. The okay. first one is probably four months. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Still not helping the sheep out there, but okay. it's me. Yeah, I mean, okay. it's, yeah. It, when you get the facts, it doesn't quite line up with, you know, with. Well, I think they've also domesticated themselves. You well, think? that's another yeah, question. Right? That's another question. No, seriously. Have they learned not they have to, learned go into to go into the street? street? And we think that that, I mean, I can anecdotally, I can just say, right. I think that's, yeah. I think people have seen them stopping and looking both ways. How do we get that? Yeah, approximately. Okay. okay. So the point is that you're going to have a you're going we're to have shifting a... now to having citizen input about mm -hmm. where we go from here, uh, and that's that you know Michelle and I have talked about what form that can take and how that can be so, yeah, actually like used for residents like a town meeting type of thing. Yeah, or? well, we're gonna ha we'll see what the what the group is. Okay. You know, I think I, my my hunch is that we'll start with a smaller group. Okay. And then decide uh, it's going to be a matter, I think, of education and public relations yes, really. uh, about that and get the best ideas people have for how they're protecting their yards and see if there's any action the council can take um, to make that easier or to help people protect things to understand what's being done elsewhere, what has worked, what is not. But we're, we're basically down to that one issue. Yes, but they care about the most. No, I mean, it's well, like the, as it's far right. as as far as the ticks are concerned, right? Once they are introduced, it does not matter how many deer you kill; they will go to other hosts, mm -hmm. and um, it just well. And a big problem too is people feed the deer and they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a whole other matter because we have in our code uh, that people are not allowed to feed the not deer, allowed, and right. the research shows, by the way, that there is a very measurable dif dif difference between the number of deer that congregate in a, in a community. Yeah. If you've got somebody who's feeding deer, yeah. you are gonna have more deer. And that could be another item on the, on the sheet. That Correct. Used for the realtor. Correct. No feeding. We have to get a list of our ordinances that people have to know <laughs> yeah, when they move in. Well, I'm saying that the Greenway down here is a good place to go in the bed down a lot. So that's, mm -hmm. you get a lot of deer down in there. Mm -hmm. yep. you know, mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. They, they, Meander around in my yard every night, mm -hmm. and then they go on down to the field, and then they meander back. And I had twelve kinds of hostas that are now gone. Mm -hmm. Right, you just set up. I did, but it's ice cream for them. Right, yeah, it's salad bar. Okay, so uh, does anybody have any other business that we should address this evening? Mayor, have you said the things you want to do? I believe I did. Just wanted to mention that on February 8th, and it seems like a lot of things have gone on on February, Allegheny Land Trust is having a meeting in the Eagle Room, I believe from 6 to 8. Oh. To talk about, um, again, I think this will be the second meeting that they have. And that's an important meeting. Yeah. Also, on February 8th, same time, 6 to 8, um, our representative, um, 
um, Salisbury's having a, a um, elected officials meeting. Yeah. At the bricklayers union. Yeah. Up there on uh, 22 across from the Sears. Right. right. So that's something. And uh, he's asked me to make sure that I spread the word amongst everybody. This is the time when they're going to be going to be taken back to Harrisburg yep. budget mm -hmm. items. So what, um, what should yeah. we go to her with and, and talk about that? And yeah. Right. And uh, just one other thing. Um, I'll do it right there. The uh, the Bulldogs Penn Park, you and I talked about yes, that did. quite extensively, and there was some grant money available uh -huh. um, to do some work down there to put updates and upgrades to the area. But then, what's Allegheny Land Trust going to do with it? Where do we go? What do we, what we are our next decisions move? to make? But yeah. So we can keep that on the burner somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I, I walked through the other day, a lot of evidence that a lot of people use that park. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like it's. And since it's been cleaned up, I think you're off the roof. Yeah. You know, more people are using it and it does not look abandoned. Right. You know, right before. Yes, thank you, Ralph. <clears throat> yeah. So is it officially opened? We don't open the park anymore. We never have. I didn't think so. So probably sometime in late spring, yeah. we might have officially really dragged on so far. Right. right. And, then and, then it, and then there's the change. Nobody, nobody really opens their parks in the winter. Right. You know, because. Right. It's a so, you know, but once the weather changes and things get better, then we'll open the gates and, you know, do what we always did. Mm -hmm. know, there. But we did a lot of work down. We spent several hours down there cleaning everything up. I mean, there's more to do, but, sure. you know, it just changes. Other things are pending and we're going to take care of those things. But right. We got to a point where you can get down there. It's, it's safe to walk mm -hmm. down there. And the one, the one pavilion is in pretty good shape. The other one, not so much. The other one has always been, been horrible. Right. But the other one is good. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. could use some electrical work or whatever, yeah. but for the most part, it, it, I know when I went a few, a few months ago, mm -hmm. I was surprised yeah. how good it was. Huh? Yeah. They really so, did a good job. It's a long term, long -term the thing. Yeah. yeah. Once he, once he opens the park, we put our trail cam. We have two trail cameras. Uh, well, we have to have additional conversations about that whole space. That we're gonna do. And then just, just one other thing. Um, I placed a plastic bag receptacle out in the hallway here, and this yes. will benefit the, uh, our Rotary Club, Churchill Wilkins Rotary. The goal is for us to collect a thousand pounds of plastic in order to get a bench. That we could find somewhere, maybe somewhere outside the borough. Yeah. We'll have a bench outside. Right. This is just one of our fundraisers. Uh -huh. So those, those bags that come from the supermarkets, bread bags, any, they call it plastic film, dry cleaning bag. Yeah, that's you know, misleading. When they say film, people, yeah. If our residents ask me about that, you can see when they call it, yeah. yeah. You know, when you buy your, your, uh, your toilet paper and uh, paper towels, it's all wrapped in that plastic, mm -hmm. and that's recyclable. Uh, when you buy your water, that's plastic recycled. Plastic uh, if you get furniture or something that comes in, mm -hmm. it's wrapped in plastic. That's recyclable. Mm -hmm. If you have a whole lot, if you give me a call, I'll go and pick it up. But otherwise, there's a container out in the hallway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, does anybody have any other business that they'd like to discuss this evening? Okay. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I was working. 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 I was working